In the game of basketball, everybody develops at their own pace. Some young prospects are capable of stepping onto an NBA court and holding their own against the level of competition right away, while others struggle adjusting to the pace and physicality of the league. This doesn't mean you should write them off, because while they're unable to produce consistently, they may be flashing signs of potential for the future. These flashes of potential are the key to having hope for a young player's future ability, because as time goes on, those flashes will likely likely become regular occurrences, and once that happens, you begin to see that player become very good at the game. However, if these flashes of potential don't happen as often as you may like, that's when you should begin to worry, which brings us to the topic of today's video. Today, we're going to be discussing a player by the name of Thon Maker, and how he went from being someone who burst onto the basketball scene as someone with potential Hall of Fame talent to being a complete afterthought riding the bench. Before we start though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. Maker's story begins back when his uncle arranged for his family to flee to Uganda and then shortly after that to Australia in order to avoid the dangerous civil war happening around them. They were accepted into the city of Perth as refugees and it was here in Australia that his basketball journey began. Maker's parents were both very tall, with his father being 6 foot 8 and his mother being 6 foot 3, so he was destined to grow up to be tall enough to dominate the game of basketball. At the age of 13, he was already 6 foot 7, but he actually first fell in love with the game of soccer. It wasn't until a man by the name of Edward Smith, who works helping migrant children get opportunities they wouldn't otherwise receive, offered him the opportunity to participate in some big basketball camps that Maker finally shifted his focus to the sport of basketball. When he first started playing at these camps, he was notably pretty bad, but that didn't change the fact that he played as hard as he could the entire time he was out there. That drive is what stuck out to Smith most, and after that, coaches from America began to notice too. He was invited to camps in Texas, where he began to improve as an actual player, and now being 6 foot 8, he started developing the skills of a wing player. In his own words, Maker said himself he wanted to stay 6 foot 8 to be a guard, but as it would turn out, he would continue to grow all the way to 7 foot 1. Maker then made the transition to America to play high school basketball at Carlisle School in Virginia, and in his first two seasons there, he dominated by averaging 22 points, 13 rebounds, and 4.5 and blocks per game. As a sophomore, he won the Gatorade State Player of the Year award and led Carlisle to a state championship, officially putting himself on the radar of every big college program, and yes, even NBA teams. After that, he transferred to Athletic Institute in Canada, where he played alongside another current NBA player, Jamal Murray. While there, that duo brought home yet another championship to add to the collection, and Maker's profile just kept getting bigger and bigger. Thon Maker is, as I mentioned earlier, 7 foot 1 with a 9 foot 3 inch standing reach. Plus, he grew up training as if he was going to be someone playing on the wing, so despite being the size of a center, he has the skills of being a guard, being able to handle the ball, create off the dribble, and shoot from deep. It by no means was Kevin Durant-esque, but while researching and looking back at early comparisons for his game, the name Kevin Garnett came up a lot. Garnett was a big man that dominated the defensive end of the floor, had a very strong handle for someone at his position in an era where bigs weren't necessarily needed to be as versatile as they are now, and while he wasn't the best three-point shooter, he did have a silky smooth mid-range jumper that he utilized a ton. Thon Maker's mixtapes on YouTube were drawing in millions of viewers because of the uniqueness of his game, and at a time when the term unicorn was being popularized by Kristaps Porzingis, Maker was seen as someone next in line to fall under that category. However, just as quickly as players rise, the skeptics come out equally as fast. Scouts and analysts began to hyperanalyze his game, and a lot of them found a lot of the same criticisms that got hammered home about Thon Maker. The biggest one was the fact that he was incredibly skinny, and the lack of strength was going to be a problem at the next level. He was able to rely on simply being bigger than everyone else at the high school level, but in the NBA, when surrounded by a bunch of other 7-footers who are all stronger than you, that's when it's going to become an issue. The other one was much crazier, being the fact that his age was legitimately questioned. 
Because of his upbringing and history as a refugee, people thought he might be a few years older than he claimed, which as we all know in the world of the NBA draft makes a big difference. If someone as raw as Maker is a teenager, then it makes sense for a team to draft him highly and develop him for a few years, but if he was, say, 22 years old already, then the fact that his game is still so unpolished becomes a much bigger deal. In 2016, he declared for the draft without having played college basketball, and he was able to do so because of a technicality of him reclassifying and graduating in 2015, and then stating that he played an extra season by his own choice. So he met the requirements of age and being one year removed from graduation. Because of the unusual path to the draft, combined with a weird balance of intrigue and doubt based on his physical attributes, both good and bad, he was projected to go anywhere from the lottery to the second round, but when the draft finally happened he did end up going in the lottery to the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks, as you all know, have had a lot of success developing projects, with their franchise player Giannis Antetokounmpo being one of the most successful development projects of all time. Because of this, they viewed Thon as yet another worthwhile risk to take, because while he definitely had bust potential, he was also viewed as someone with the highest ceiling in the class. At the beginning, things were still looking good for him, and as a rookie, the Bucks took an interesting approach to developing him. They only played him about 10 minutes per game, but they also did so by putting him in the starting lineup for the entire second half of the season, so he was getting small opportunities in bunches, but not necessarily consistent minutes while also being a starter. He averaged only 4 points and 2 rebounds per game, but his per 36 numbers were actually comparable to Kevin Garnett's rookie season, so the comparisons were still sticking around. Plus, after Kevin Garnett actually worked out with Thon one-on-one -on -one in the offseason before his second year, he came away incredibly impressed, and had this to say. Thon Maker reminds me of myself. He loves the game. He's a young, exuberant athlete who has a lot of tools. He has touch, he has agility, he has really good feet. He has a really good shot from 3 point all the way up to 19 to 21 feet. He has very good bones as we say. Thon is going to be the MVP of the league one day. Mark it down. He has the bones. He has the appetite to be able to chase something like that. That is a huge claim. He didn't just say Thon was going to be a good player, he didn't just say he was going to be an all-star, he said he would be an MVP, meaning that Kevin Garnett truly believed Thon had the ability to be one of the best players in the whole league, similar to the growth Giannis has seen. However, from that point on would be when things began to crash down to reality because despite seeing his minutes doubled in year two, his numbers didn't really change all that much, and his shooting splits actually got worse. Then in his third season, his numbers were still at about 5 points and 3 rebounds per game, and his efficiency both from 3 and from the field were still below average. The Bucks traded him midway through that season because they got to the point where winning was the top priority, and Thon clearly didn't didn't fit that timeline. He got shipped off to Detroit, where minutes were absolutely up for grabs, but his role for the second half of that year and then this current season in Detroit really hasn't changed a bit from the beginning of his career. This brings us to the present, and we now have to accept the reality that Thon Maker is not the superstar prospect many thought he could be. His enticing size, length, mobility, and shooting ability are all offset by lack of strength, inability to produce consistently, and a shooting stroke that is only good in theory and not in actuality. He's not the shot blocker he was expected to be, he's not the second coming of Garnett who can create off the dribble and be a matchup nightmare for big men, and he's not strong enough to play good defense on a consistent basis. This season in particular with Detroit should have been the year he showed everything he had, because with Blake Griffin injured and Andre Drummond traded, there were definitely minutes up for grabs, and yet in the last two months, his role was relatively unchanged, and coach Dwayne Casey was clearly not impressed with him. 
Maker is set to be a free agent this summer, and I legitimately have no idea what kind of market there will even be for him. I don't necessarily think he'll be completely out of the league, because someone will give him a chance with a contract, but the offers he receives, in all likelihood, will be short-term, minimum deals used as a way to, for him to prove himself. He's 23 years old already, so the fact that he's barely added any strength to his game and he still seems very unpolished offensively is concerning, and unless he turns things around soon, he'll start to approach bust status. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below your thoughts on Thonmaker and where he goes from here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.